G'day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds you all well. Today we're going to have a look at versions within Adobe Lightroom. Basically what uh, versions allows you to do is to have multiple versions of the same image or multiple edits of the same image available. Uh, so you can basically have multiple versions uh, edited and ready to go for whatever use it may be. And that use may be simply testing to see which version of an edit you prefer. For example, often uh, if I'm committing an image to print, I'll make sort of micro adjustments to that image or or just adjustments as I go and rather than make the adjustment and only having that version I'll create versions uh, or multiple versions of that image allowing me to be able to refer back to previous versions of the edit um, to see if that's the better way to go. So let's get into it and have a look. See, I have an image here that I photographed in Scotland. It was in a coffee shop. I uh, just felt like a really lovely moment with that sun coming through the front there, uh, the texture on the walls, and uh, people just going about their daily routine. Now, there's no uh, edits that have been placed. There's no uh, changes. This is straight out of the camera. Uh, so what we're going to do is just make a... a an initial edit, uh, which will be in color, and then we'll look at some other options as well. So I'm just gonna increase the exposure a little bit, just increase the contrast. These will just be very quick edits. Just gonna drop those highlights. I'm just floating back and forward on that slider just to see where it is that I'm going to like it. I'm gonna pop a little bit more contrast in there. Excellent, and I'm just gonna increase the color temperature. Uh, there we go, just to warm things up a little bit. Add a little bit of tint. There's just a little bit of cyan sort of hinting through. Yep, yeah, that's much better. Uh, we're going to just throw a little bit of vibrance and a hint of saturation, just a sprinkling. There we go. Actually, we're going to back that off because vibrance is probably giving me enough color intensity that I'm looking for. All right, we're just gonna add a little bit of sharpening and uh, just check how that sharpening or where it's being applied to the image at the moment. I'm just holding down my Alt key. There we go, that looks pretty good. Happy with that. And yep, no, that's all good. And the overall cleanliness of the images is pretty nice. So I'm not gonna worry about any denoising at all. All right, so. That's just a good initial first edit, and it's very, very quick. Uh, I'd probably uh, spend a, a bit more time uh, editing this if it was being used for any sort of serious output. Um, but what I want to do is just create. We have the original there, which is the original image without changes. So we can see if we hover over um, that and uh, take the cursor away. Um, we can create a version. So what I'm going to call that is color edit v1. Excellent. All right. So now we have the original and we have the color edit. Let's go back to our edit menu. And what I'm going to do now is I want to create a slightly desaturated version and a little bit more contrast because I just want to give it a little bit more of a dramatic sort of feel. There we go. I'm just going to drop the exposure a little bit there as well. That's great. So we've just removed a bit of color, a little bit more contrast. And I'm going to call this color drop V1. And really doesn't matter what you name it. The main thing is, is that you are aware of what each name is referred to. So I've just called it color drop because I'm dropping a little bit of color out of the image. The V1 I always, this probably comes from my video work, but the V1 is just the version number. So the color edit, I've, I've made one version, so I've called it V1. And the reason I've put the one in there is in case I want to make more versions that would come under a color edit, I would call that version two or V2, V3, V4, and so on. All right, now let's go back to our edit. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to convert it to black and white. And let's just have a look at that. Let's drop those highlights a little bit more. It's pretty good. Drop the contrast just a little bit. I want to sort of convey with the black and white the sort of texture and a little bit of grittiness, but not 
not lose detail in the shadow areas, if that makes sense. All right. Yep, that's all great. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's create a new version. And we're going to call it black and white v1. Excellent. All right, so off the same file, you can see I now have four versions to refer back to. I can refer back to the original. I can refer to the first color edit that I did. The next color edit that I did where I dropped a little bit of color out of the image and the black and white version. And it would be super easy to take those three edited versions and create a final file and save it and then print all three versions so that I can see which one is starting to speak to me, which one I think is working best for the content of the image and the purpose that I want to use it for. Let's say, for example, we're printing it for an exhibition. It might be a series on coffee shops and the series might be all in black and white. However, I just want to look at how the image works with color, right? So that's a great way to be able to do it. And to then be able to create separate files, you simply select the version and export the particular version uh, that you've selected and name it appropriately. And that way you've got all of those versions there um, ready to go for print. The best part about it is, is even though you can have multiple versions, obviously there's uh, four versions here from the original and the three edited versions, there's actually still only one file there. So you're not taking up any more space on your hard drive, you're not creating more images, you're just creating different versions of each of those images, which is a really handy thing. Simplifies things, uh, but gives you the flexibility of non-destructive editing and creating different options to look at. Definitely a workflow and an option for editing that I think is worth having a look at. Especially if you're not sure what type of edit you want to go with with your images. Thanks so much for stopping by. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's been helpful. As always, any questions in the comments below are welcome. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.